Welcome back, everyone, to <laughs> the hell is that the air brakes of the truck behind? Uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> was that? A, I thought it was a sneeze at first. I, that's what it did sound like. Someone <laughs> that was. I don't know if someone sneezed or if that was air brakes. It was in the beginning. Holy moly! Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, feel free to use this mech. It's always good. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to Blue Collar Startup. Um, one of the hosts, Mike Nelson, Five Towers Media, joined today. By Obviously, the other host. By the other host. Derek Foster. D-Rock. Mike, how you doing? What's new at the farm? What's new at the farm? Uh, holy moly. It's been a little bit. I'm just, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think what's new. I'm doing, it's it's so labor intensive right now because I've just been Did- moving sheep almost every day. So what almost you, daily moves. What are you uh, moving for? Is that? Uh, fresh, fresh pasture. So I'm, I'm working towards uh, high intensity grazing where basically you take a good amount of animals and you graze them on a small area for a short amount of time and then you move them. Got it. And um, it does a lot of things. One of the things it does is it uh, reduces parasite load. So, okay. you know, if like with sheep specifically, there's some parasites that they have that if they're eating the same grass for more than a few days, uh, the parasites in their fecal matter hatches crawls up the grass and then they eat it and so now they're increasing their parasite load um interesting and then uh the the other thing it does too though is it's it ends up being it's a regenerative practice so it's better for the land so uh it a smaller area forces the sheep to um be closer together and and so they're they're pushing more of their poop into the soil basically as they move around uh, and they trample more of the grass, and so, um, and then they move on. But you don't go back to that area for weeks, if not months, or in Got some it. cases, if you have enough land, it, it could be a year before you get back to that one specific point of pasture. Um, so it's just better for the land, better for the sheep. How many sheep? Uh, right now, we're at about a dozen. Oh, wow. well, you've uh, quite a bit then. Well, we had, you know, I uh, I bought a ram. I bought a ram this spring. Which is the wrong time to buy a ram, but I couldn't say no to the deal. Um, and we had some sheep. We had four new lambs hit That's the right, lawn. The babies. The babies, wow. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So awesome. I was really hoping, to be honest, I was hoping for about six lambs because I had three pregnant ewes, uh, but one twinned out, and two of them had singles. Wow. So uh, we'll see what our lamb. And so next year will really be the year that puts us where we want to be, uh, well, hopefully, lamb wise. Or because, or you wise, I should say, female sheep. Uh, two of the four new sheep this year were rams. So, uh, very nice, awesome. You eat the rams. I saw the babies when I was scrolling social media and uh, showed showed my daughter and got one of those aws. Oh, they're <laughs> yeah, cute. They are. Holy moly, they're cute. They are. Um, so yeah, just moving a lot, uh, trying to open up some new areas. I'm trying to use the. Uh, I bought some goats. Nice, nice. I got a couple more goats on the way too. Mow the lawn for you. Well, that's uh, so originally I was, you know, I have all this area that's like really brushed, pretty brushy and wooded. And I was going to uh, uh, brush hog it with the tractor. And then I was like, that's like real work. That's going to take me hours. And I'm like, or I can just buy some goats and put them out there for the summer and let them just eat <laughs> yeah, it. So great for the kids. Well, you know, it's funny though. So I bought, uh, I, so I messaged my buddy Chris Music. I don't know if you guys know Chris or not. You know, Chris. No, I know. So, uh, He's got a farm over in like South Coast Falls, Gansford. And I knew he had some goats. And I was like, hey, uh, I need a couple goats. And so I bought a couple of his goats. But I didn't realize that they were Nigerian dwarfs. So they're just little goats. Oh, that's cool. They're small. Uh, they're cute. <laughs> but so I get them over there to start eating brush. They won't touch it. And so I'm like I'm texting back and forth with Chris about it and laughing. And he's like, well, you know, those... Those goats, have, they're accustomed to a certain kind of lifestyle over here. You know, <laughs> a lot of grain and hay, and they yeah. kind of got a maid over at his farm. I'm like, I want, I need them to do some work over here. So that's funny. Yeah, that's about it. Good. Yeah. So, Joe. So we're joined today for the listeners. We're joined today by Joe Cerrone from Cerrone Plumbing and Heating. Welcome, Joe. Wait, no. Thank you. Cerrone Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Yep. Out of Queensbury. Mm-hmm. Uh, and really, I mean, you guys are covering a lot bigger area than that these days, yeah, then, right? Yeah, like, we cover forty-five minutes to an hour from Queensbury, so yeah, quite a quite a big area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and growing. And and so specifically, I wanted to have Joe come in today. Um, I mean, just in the, I mean, we've been working together what about five years? Yeah, 
right? Mm -hmm. And the growth that you guys have had is yeah, amazing. It, yeah, about every three years we doubled in size, roughly. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and and so and the, he's a second generation business owner. So that yep. was you know one of the big things. Uh, you know, his dad started the business what thirty years ago now. Rough. Yep, about thirty years ago. Yeah. yeah, I was like five or six years old. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so and I want to talk about and I I so I was googling some different stats before the show try to try to be somewhat prepared for today's show and um one of the things i saw was that 70 percent of businesses never make it to center, second generation and only 10 percent make it to third wow so yeah numbers are are slim yeah it's crazy That's very impressive it's crazy and to see the kind of growth so i want to talk about that so uh i figured maybe we should uh you know tell us a little about who we are and about surround plumbing and heating and air conditioning yeah um so, yeah, back in the, the day, I worked for my dad. Uh, my dad started it in the late or the early 90s, roughly. And uh, as I grew up, you know, I would go on service calls with him, you know, um, helping him fix, you know, leaky sinks and give him a hand. And then um, as I got older, you know, that was my place of work for the summer. Yeah. You know, um, and, you know, we're a small, smaller outfit back then. Um, didn't do much service. You know, we just mainly did a lot of new construction. Um, and, you know, I'd work with his, you know, his guys, you know, throughout the years. And, you know, eventually went to school for it, you know, at Hudson Valley Community College. Blue Collar College. Shout out. Shout out to those guys. Yep. I love that. Great school. Um, now, when you – so I'm trying to think back. So when you – when we started working with you guys, uh, like when we were doing CrossFit. Yep. Now, were you somewhat fresh out of college at that point? Or you just, I feel no, like you just... um, so I graduated oh nine. Okay. So I would say, yeah, I was like four or five years out of college at that time. And had you been, did you go right back to work for your dad out of college? No, I went down to Long Island um, and I worked for a company down there for a little bit. And then I started my own business with a partner down there, which it didn't pan out. Yeah. Um, learned a lot though. And then, uh, and then I came up back here. Cause that's what, when I first met you at CrossFit, I feel like you had, like you had just, you had maybe you were back with your dad's shop for maybe, yeah. maybe a year or six months not or something much. like yeah, that. Probably yeah. Probably not long. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so yeah, I put it, let's scale things out for people. So how many, when you, when at that point in time, when I met you at CrossFit, mm -hmm. how many people were working for your dad's place? I would say probably about seven or eight. Okay. Yeah. Seven or eight. Um, no office. You know, all the phone calls we get forward to our cell phones. Yeah. Which is super fun. <laughs> um, no, you know, on call. I was the on call service tech. Nice. Yep. Yeah, which was even more fun. I bet you love that. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, come a long way, but it was, that was the roughest of it, I would say, looking back. Yeah. Yeah. But. So, and, and how many employees now? 30. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Have you, did you, how many employees did you have when you and your business partner had a business? Two. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't yeah. get very far. Yeah. So I, cause I definitely want to talk I, about the learning curve, right? You know, oh yeah. I was, I was young. I was 21, 22 years old, Yeah, you know, and I was like, all right, let me do this, you know, and learned a lot, you know, yeah. Long Island and the people down there are, um, tough people, you know? It's not, you know, not easy customers, um, you know, but there, there's a lot of work down there, but it, it is hard work. You know? yeah. yeah. I've always said that plumbing was one of the one, one of the things I never wanted to learn how to do because then I'd be expected to do it. <laughs> right. You know it's what true. I mean? Like yeah. if some breaks the house, I'm like, I don't ever like, right. it's the only thing I don't want to know how to do. I don't mind framing. I don't mind sheet rocking. I don't mind doing, I mean, I'm not a big fan of roofing. I don't mind doing any of that stuff, but plumbing. Just picture somebody crawling around a basement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it can be anywhere, you know? Yeah. Attics, basements, all sorts of creatures. Always wear the spider side. Yep. Which I hate the spiders. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> me too. I... <laughs> Still not my friends. So, you want to yeah. see me freak out? Watch me walk into a face first into a spider web. And I'm, I'm yeah, one of those yeah. people that'll be like. <laughs> you know, the, no. key, the key is to keep your keep straight, you know, and don't look around. Yeah. You know? It's a good do. tip for everybody at home. To see yeah. that big softball size oh, crawl. Yeah. No, you don't want to see it because oh. then, then you can't finish it. You know? really? so you just, like whatever you're down there doing. <laughs> Get me out of this crawl space. All right. So so seven employees to 30 employees. 
What? Tell us a little bit about the beginning. So uh, when you first were coming back and working with your dad, mm-hmm. uh, how was it? The house family uh, family business. Um, it, it was interesting, you know, because uh, so I, you know, he didn't do much service, you know, yeah. and I, that's what I went to school for, and I did that. I did, you know. Uh, HVAC heating and air conditioning mm-hmm. service, um, and he his background was more plumbing. You know, he was New York City plumber. You know, that moved up here yeah. a long time ago. Um, so I was bringing that to the table. You know, which was which was good. And then um, yeah, we just kind of just slowly year after year, you yeah. know, expanded. Um, you know, to the point where like, oh yeah, Joe can do the service calls. You know, so then all of a sudden I'm in my own van doing mm-hmm. the service calls. Um, you know, and then all of a sudden there's, you know, an install crew working under me, you know, um, and this would happen very slowly, Yeah. you know, um, and then it kind of just expanded, you know, gradually expanded from there. Yeah. Uh, do you think that that gradual expansion though is better than like a huge expansion in a short time? Like I, I can't grasp a huge expansion cause it's like more or less you, you get something, you figure out how to do everything yourself, you know, yeah. and then, then you kind of delegate from there. But if you don't know how to do a lot of the stuff, it's hard to either train, you know, a lot of the thing is training people how to do it because, you know, you put an ad out for HVAC, HVAC installer, chances are like you're, you know, they have no experience right. or they want to get into the field or something like that, which was the case. It's hard to find people with experience. So a lot of the people back then, we're handy people that I would train myself who are still with us today. And one of our, you know, top guys too. Um, but it just, you know, that took a long time because it's like, okay, I have, you know, boosted ads for, you know, employees right now. I get like a couple a month, you yeah. know, and maybe, you know, I'll bring two or three people on a year, you know, that's what it, you know, that's what it ends up being, you know, depending on. There's such a shortage of people. All, all you young guys out there. Call Joe. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Coming out of the coming out of HVCC. That's it. Yeah. So how did that? We've we've talked quite a bit on the podcast, and you know, one that comes to mind is Josh Jewett over at Coles Collision because they grew very quickly as well. Um, how did you adapt to you know the influx of business as far as your systems and processes go? What yeah. did what that look like for you? So that was you know handwriting everything. And put everything in, in, you know, in file cabinets. And it was like a lot, you know, back in the day, it was tough because, you know, like it's right now, it's all about detail. And especially when you go to a service call, you know, you want to have every kind of detail you possibly can, you know, for the next technician or what you did there. Um, so it was, it was a tough transition because like back then it's like, okay, you, you have a file cabinet, you know, you put it in the customer's file. Um, and then eventually I was like, okay, I, let me just do this on the computer. So then I was like, kind of do it on an, you know, Excel and word. And then I would have files for each customer. And then it's like, oh, wait a second, there's programs for this, you know? And then you start, you know, working yourself into a program that's made up for it, you know, where, you know, all of a sudden now we're, we're taking videos and putting under customers, you know, invoice and we're pressing buttons that telling the customer that will be there in 15 minutes, you know, we're, we're pressing another button and saying, how did we do and getting a review from the customer? It's, it's crazy to see how it evolved, you know, back in the day when I was like handwriting everything yeah. and putting it in the file, you know, which was kind of crazy. How did that go over with uh, your father? He was like, he's pretty, my father's a pretty laid back guy. Um, you know, so he, you know, kind of let me take the reins to some extent, you know, and it's, you know, he's like, Oh yeah, you know, go for it. <laughs> you know? So it was, uh, you know, kind of, kind of let me do what I thought was right. You know, mm-hmm. even though I was in my early twenties. Um, but you know, I kind of just, you know, did what I thought was right at the time. And here we are, you know? Yeah. And, and I'd like to, let's, let's dig into that a little bit more though. Unpack that a little bit more. Like, I'd love to hear more about the, at what point was your father like, all right, Joe, just run with whatever you're going to do, right? Like, So there were the, over the years, there's a lot of butting heads. And the, the, where the butting heads were was like, who's telling the guys to do what? Sure. You know, so when, when more employees came on, it was like, okay, you do the plumbing employees. I'll do the heating employees. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then um, the fields cross. 
you know, plumbing, you know, turgent heating, it's gas, later, yeah, right. the gas lines, or was that plumbing or is that heating, you know, and it's, you know, and it, it started to cross a little bit to the point where, you know, after butting heads and this like, again, huge learning experience, you know, um, we kind of just like came to terms, listen, I'll be the day to day manager. Okay. You're the CEO and everybody reports to me, you know, is a couple years into that butting heads. That's what, yeah. We, Figured out was the best way to go. Yeah. You say butting heads. Was it like a gentle? Oh yeah. Thing or was it, it, it like, like were you throwing you know, wrenches at each other? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, it was tough at the time because um, I lived there too. I lived at my parents' house. Yeah. You know because I was you know saving up money for a house and stuff. So you know it was okay. It's like it's hard. It, it's tough because like you get home and it's all t- all you talk about is work. Yeah. You know, and then you know then it, it it's. It was an, ex- you know, then we're like, all right, at home, let's not talk about work. Okay, let's just stay for the morning, you know, and it, that was hard to do as well. But um, it was a little bit better after I moved out, you know, yeah, because we're in the same situation. But it was, that was fun too. Yeah. It just made me think about my 19 year old daughter that's living at home right now while she's going to college and we're butting heads a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'd just bring her into work. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> spend all day with her. Yeah, go go spend. 40, I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I, I couldn't imagine like I like even now. I mean, and she sleeps all day. That's part of the reasons why we're butting heads. You know, she stays up all night playing Minecraft. I'm like, you're 19 years old, but we're butting heads about other stuff. But I was just like, man, if I had to like work with her and live with her, like we might be like, I don't know. There might be one less nineteen year old on the planet. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then I brought my mom into it. I was like, mom, you make a great secretary. Did, didn't didn't want to do it. No. <laughs> we went down that road for a little bit, and then it was like okay, because um, I was like, yeah, why why are we answering the phones? We're trying to work all day, mm-hmm. you know. So it was, you know. I think that's awesome though that you guys were able to figure that out and talk about it. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. And then I was like, oh, let's you know buy stuff bulk online because it's a lot cheaper, like fittings and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, like I have this little shelf in my parents' garage in the corner. You know, with like pex fittings and look at that, a, look at that shelf now. Oh right? yeah, that shelf is a uh, is a warehouse. It's a warehouse with, with yeah. three hundred items in it. Um, you know, bought from the you know places we want to buy it from, which mm-hmm. is about twenty different suppliers now. So yeah, so that's so let's talk a little bit about you know kind of some of the things that you did coming in second generation. You know, the first thing I heard you say was you brought in new services, yes. right? Yeah. So you expanded your offerings. Um, so basically, you know, like, what do they call that vertical integration, uh, where you're, you know, you're basically looking for what other things can I sell a customer base I already have. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was the first thing. And then the second thing was, you know, well, like what, what gave you the idea to start bulk ordering? So, um, I was like, you know, you, you go to, you know, it's all about basically every job comes down to like the time you spend on it and the material. So mm-hmm. the more efficient you are and the cheaper you can get material, you know, the more profitable the job is. Um, so it's like, okay, I go to a local supplier and I'm paying $7 for this three quarter inch PEX fitting, which I'm looking online and it's 89 cents. And I go, wow, that's, that's a lot. That's a big difference, yeah. you know? So, um, so then I started, you know, bulk ordering online, you know, cause that was the thing to do, especially when you're throwing in a lot of these fittings, mm-hmm. you know, all the time. So that was, how know. did you decide which items that you were going to buy? Ones we use the most of. That was, it was just, yeah. It's like, wow, we use a, you know, nineties, you know, couplings, cat, you know, mm-hmm. anything we used a, a bulk amount, it was like, okay, anything. And we did a lot of new construction houses at the time. So it's like, okay, any new construction basically, what I was doing is going there after we did a house and I was writing down every single solitary piece of material we used. Mm-hmm. And then I would go back online and I was like, let me see where I can find the cheapest material. Okay. So there was, Smart. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you were, yeah. there was some, a paper trail involved. Right? Oh yeah. It wasn't just shooting from the hip. But. No, no, no. There, yeah, there's a paper trail. And I was during, I was working there during the day installing the stuff. Right. You know, so it was, you know, so you pretty much knew what I was using yeah. and what we use a lot of. And then verified by, right. By data, by writing it down and yeah. Creating yeah. lists. Right, list and being organized and all that yeah. fun stuff. Organization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How valuable was that? Uh, so valuable. Yeah. 
we're still still to these days i'll look back and i'll look at my sheets they're not that much different from our sheets now Mm -hmm. but they're just a lot bigger and more you know involved you know as far as like what we're you know stocking and everything yeah we're buying and buying bulk or getting job pricing for something you're using a abundant amount of Mm -hmm. you know so Hmm. i'm just thinking about that i'm like we don't really have any products that we sell there's like a lot too the field especially with this field but there's so much different kinds of material yeah you know so like back in when i worked to work in long island like if you didn't have the part that you needed and the supplier was 20 minutes away but you're going the opposite direction at rush hour <laughs> you know, like, while. oh yeah. yeah like it's you know you're 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 done it's like three hours later you're back with the part and you're mm-hmm. installing it and that's you know quarter you know quarter of a day right there and now you guys with your vans and stuff, I mean, you bring a lot of product with you now too, right? So. Yeah. Yep. So like from, you know, what we stock in the, our, you know, uh, at our shop, you know, we have bins mm-hmm. of stuff that the guys stock up. So they have trays of each thing and it's all there and they can, they restock up themselves and kind of go from there. We're not yeah. to the point of scanning barcodes yet, but that's probably our next thing. You know, scanning material in and out for of like inventory shop. management. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We do, we just put a great system in place. I'll have to give you the name of oh, it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. A, it's a good system. But we just did the same thing. Nice, it's funny. I that's mean, awesome. mention them on the air. Maybe we get them as a sponsor. You know. Yeah, we can do that. Use this inventory system, everyone. Yeah. Ching. <laughs> <laughs> Help pay for some of our production costs. <laughs> um. So services, bulk buying. What are some other things uh, that you've done as a second generation owner coming in? And um, I would say, like I, you know, in my business, I brought like I guess structure, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, when people started reporting, you know, to me, there was like more of less laying down the law, <laughs> you know, of you know what, and, and I was like the model employee of what to do. So mm-hmm. I brought like a little bit more structure to the day to day. Um, you know, I would say employees, you know. So when you say that, are you, do you mean because your dad just, you know, just a bit looser? Cause he's like, a, he was a solo printer, it was just yeah. him. And then he had like yep. a couple of guys. But, you know, and... he's, he's out doing quotes and estimates, you know, and then like when I'm on the job, mm-hmm. production went up, you know, because the son's not, you know, the son's boss is on the job. So yep. I'm there and, you know, basically whatever I was doing, even in, you know, high school and I was working there, it's like, okay, some of the older generation workers are not, you know, they don't like to sh- share the education of the field that much, you know, so they don't really show you how to do stuff. They just like know? to pick on you when you do something exactly. wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Their, their knowledge is, you know, they <clears throat> don't share it with anybody. So it's like, uh, why, why is that? I don't know. You know, do you think my like, first day working construction, I was told to get the board stretcher out of the van. Yeah. <laughs> it's the classic one. <laughs> Almost fell for it. My first restaurant job, I got sent on a search for a, don- a donut hole puncher. <laughs> they sent me across town to one. Dunkin' Donuts for a don- uh, to see <laughs> if we could borrow a, the donut hole That's puncher. Awesome. Yeah, I forget what that guy's name was. <laughs> Dick. Um, so you don't. So as far as I'm holding on, I mean, is it like because they're worried about getting replaced or I don't know? Obsolete? But like, I, like you even see it with some of the older guys now. Like they, you know, they. It's like. You know, I'm not sure what it is, you know, but like the guys who are more teachers are more valuable to me. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, like a hundred percent. So, and then they'll, they'll, they'll teach, you know, the, the, the guy they have with them, what they're doing or show them a different way to do it. So back then it was like me trying to figure out how to do it. But once I figured out how to do it fast, then I eventually got faster and more efficient than they did, yeah. you know, and all of a sudden, you know, production is up because all of a sudden, like. I'm teaching everybody. And then all of a sudden, like, okay, those guys eventually left, you know, yeah. and then I brought newer guys on that I could teach and, you know, mold to the way we like to do things. It, it sounds a lot like Josh's episode again. Yep. Uh, Cause he was talking about his system with experienced guys and apprentice. I can't remember. I got to go back and listen to that. I can't remember how that worked out or yeah. how he put that together, but he had, I remember he has a system with experienced guys and apprentices coming in and, Yep. Yeah. They, they work with each other and, and somehow they, they get 
compensated on something or like there's an incentive for them to do this. Yeah. Cause right. Cause he was saying the same thing. Like the older, the older guys didn't want to work with the newer guys. And, yep. and then he gave them a system for like, listen, if you can do this with these guys, show them how to do this, bang it out faster. I, I, we'll I, get you. We'll get you something. We'll take yeah. care of you. Yeah. I gotta, yeah. I gotta listen to that again. Curious how they would do that. But yeah, there's, we'll listen to the episode, yeah, but I, if I you should, don't, I'll, yeah. I'll listen to the episode. <laughs> yeah. It, it's tough. I always, I never understood it either, but it's almost like, I feel like they look at the younger guys and it's like, oh, well I had to learn on my own. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's let him figure it out or yeah. whatever. You know, maybe they didn't have a good mentor. Right. So you learn your own damn lessons. It comes down to patience too. Like I just want to get their job done and go home yeah. and yeah. not have that extra worry. But it's hilarious. It, it just made me think of, uh, so we're using net fencing on the farm for a bunch of stuff right now. And it's, it's great from one standpoint, but it's a pain in the ass from another standpoint. So I was, uh, putting, I was moving sheep the other day and Kristen came over and just kind of like grabbed one end of the fence and started moving it. Can I help you? And I just looked at it and I'm like, nope. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm like, nope. And, uh, and she's like, why not? I'm like, because it's super frustrating. I'm already frustrated. <laughs> And I really don't think I could communicate to you how to effectively help me without getting more frustrated. So just let me be pissed off for the next 45 minutes while I do this. But that's what made me think of that, yeah. It's funny. That's it funny. is funny. <laughs> Such a jerk. Sorry, Kristen. Love you. So um, what do you think the hardest part about being a second-generation owner is? Um, hardest part? Um it's a tough question. That's what we do here at Blue Collar Startup. <laughs> we ask the tough questions. I would say, like, like the, the toughest point, you know, was, like, when we are like, at that time we were butting heads a little bit, yeah. you know, and it was, like, half and half, and it's like, okay, you're, you're in charge of this half, and I'm in charge of that half, which, you know, that took a while to overcome. Um, so, like, that era was definitely the toughest when we didn't have an office, when we were getting all the phone mm-hmm. calls, it was just like, okay, I don't think I took a vacation for like six years. And that was, that was the roughest part of it. Um, now it's, you know, he helps out but for about a half a day nowadays, you know, so now it's totally a lot does, easier. Does he like know. it now? Oh, he loves it. Yeah. You know, he's on the golf course right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, I mean, the hard, the hardest part of it was that time, I guess. Yeah. I can imagine it's got to be tough. Yeah, and living together. Put that, throw that in there. Throw that in yeah. there, yeah. yeah. The pace, the resistance, <laughs> yeah. the little pepper on that burger. <laughs> right. Pick, pick yeah. your battles. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on work ethic in today's workforce? Um, you, I have like employees that are have great worth ethic um and i'd say that's the biggest problem when i'm bringing on new employees um and i try to stick them with the ones that have the better worth ethic um but it's it's tough um i don't say like they they, you know they want to work you know Mm -hmm. um but the this generation is definitely a little bit different uh, there's a whole different approach to uh, this day and age, you know, as far as employees. Um, so, you know, their work ethic, I mean, you you get good ones and you get bad ones, you know. Do you have a big, a big challenge with cell phones, like on jobs? Yeah, that's that's tough, too. Yeah. I want to, because, you know, like, I mean, we're a marketing company. I see a, a, one of our people on a cell phone. I'm like... They're probably checking some Facebook posts that they put out for a client, right? right. That's what I tell myself, right? Yeah. Um, but I, other industries where, like, you know, that cell phone's nothing to do with right. their job, Well, right? you know, we, like, they do get stuff to their cell phones and stuff, so I, I, I tell myself, just like you tell yourself, right. that they're <laughs> responding to a group text message uh, that right. the office sent. Yeah. You know, yeah. is what I tell myself. Yeah. That's interesting. Pick and choose your battles. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm sure that's a losing battle, right? Like, what the hell are you going to do about it? Yeah. Everything's so interconnected now, though. It, it, especially yeah. at you know after COVID, um, it's almost like work and family are kind of intertwined. So you know, similar, we've kind of found that happy medium and pick your battles. You know, as long yeah. as people aren't abusing it, right? Yeah, you're not gonna you're gonna say generally in the meeting, guys, like limit your times to cell phone. You know, keep it. You know, we're on the clock here, and 
And then, you can't even tell them to get off TikTok. They could be looking at a, a, a that's true an install video. You know, well that's that's another thing. They could yeah. be looking at oh uh, a manual for whatever piece of equipment. Yeah, you know, so yeah, positives and negatives. Yeah, that battle I really don't pick because yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, a same. I, don't, I just yeah. wonder what other people do if they if they deal with that or don't deal with it. Or, yeah. I guess we all do at this point. Yeah, are you guys? Uh, I know we talked a little bit about technology that you've added some technology to the business. Yeah. Uh, any, any, are you using any kind of AI or, you know, that's like the sexy thing everybody wants to talk about right now. So my, my like, so we, uh, we're all using iPads now, um, on, you know, a, a program, um, and they use AI to help, um, format their tech comments to the customer. So it sounds professional. Um, because, okay. you know, so like when they used to hand write everything, yeah. It would, the office would have a laugh, you know, of how they would spell discussion, you know, or, or something like that. Yep. And one of the guys like, we spelled discussion five different ways today, you know, and that was all the plumbers writing down what they used or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, we use, we use that, we use AI in, in that form. Is that built into the program you're using? No, it is a separate program. Yep. So are you using like a chat GPT to do... Yeah, they like copy and paste it, and just it, we got to rework okay. it for them a little bit. And I was like, guys, like read what they, you know, read what it just came out with, yeah. just so it makes sense, you know, because otherwise, you know, it's like, well, what is that word? Yeah, don't you just know? copy and paste <laughs> with the wrong the, autocorrect word. Yeah, it, it could exactly. be bad. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I just I just noticed. So when I did that search today uh, on Google to get um, who you know what the percentage of people. Second generation owners, success rate and fail rate. And uh, they now have an, an AI. So, like, basically, it gave me the AI answer, which the AI answer was it scrolled through all the results for the question I asked and summarized and gave me its belief based on the search of all the search results. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So, like, Anyway, I can go down a whole rabbit hole on that, but yeah. I, I'm just wondering how people are using it. If they, you know, I, I mean, because it's out there, like it's in being integrated. Yeah. In oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's cool though that you're using it for rewording. Yeah, yeah. like just, yeah, 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 just to kind of help clean things up. And you know, well, again, like you could have someone like me that can be uh, very direct sometimes and come off as gruff, right? I'm sure you got a couple of guys that work for you that oh, are a yeah. little gruff, yeah. and it softens them up, makes them a little more professional and. Uh, yeah, that's right. that's cool. I like that. What other kind of technology are you guys integrating? iPads, AI. Yeah, so we're using the iPads. I mean, the iPads were, were great with the program we're using, you know, because especially with, you know, when technicians are going to service calls, um, one of the previous technician is taking videos of, like, mm -hmm. what's going on. So, say, if it's an issue that's not happening every single time or Yep. We're there and it's, you know, steadily getting worse. Um, you know, the technician could like take a video of what's going on when they're there. Um, and, you know, the next te technician who goes there can, you know, pick up where he left off, mm -hmm. read all the notes he came up with, you know, and that's, you know, that, that program is, is great for that. And even like just taking pictures after you're done working on something, this is, you know, yeah. this is how we left it. Cause you know, some, sometimes like, okay, you know, everything's up and running and then, you know, the lawnmower guy comes and, you know, bashes, bashes the air conditioning we just installed and it's yeah. like, you guys left it like this? So it's like, no, this is how we left it. <laughs> it's crazy that we have to do that stuff. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have to do it. All the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, time. we have to, like, with websites and stuff when we work, like, we have to document everything, screenshots, like, oh, yeah. this is what it looked like when we got it. Yeah. We, we always run into the, uh, oh, you guys didn't finish that when... You know, we finish on a post-construction clean. We'll clean up a, an area, and then somebody comes in to do a punch list item, mm -hmm. you know, and it makes a mess. So, it, yeah, a yeah. lot of documentation needed. Oh, yeah. yeah. And people wonder why things are so expensive. Like, you got to cover that overhead, right? That's it. That's it. What's a typical day look like for you, Joe? Um, typical day is... Um, I do like meetings with either the technicians or, or the staff or the office, you know, in the like first thing in the morning. And then I'll, I'll go out into the field and I'll do a lot of quality control uh, checks on a lot of the bigger jobs that we do. Um, a lot of the new construction jobs, like I still, you know, kind of run some of them, you know, um, so for some builders. 
Um, so I'll just go in there, you know, make sure they're good, make sure they don't have any questions, and I'll, I'll do like a like a small round and I'll hit about, I don't know, half to a quarter of the jobs that we have going on. Um, and then I'll, I'll, after that, I'll go back to the office and help format the schedules because the schedules end up being like a charade, especially with the emergencies. Oh, this, you know, say we get like a dozen no AC calls, you know, in a matter of an hour mm-hmm. and the office is like, where do we put all these calls? You know, um, you know, I go back there a lot of times it's pulling, you know, installers that can do service to help do service that day, especially like last Thursday after that last, that last, last Wednesday was like 92 degrees. Mm-hmm. Um, and then hot. Thursday was like right before Memorial day. Um, the busiest day we've ever had was last Thursday. Oh, um, no kidding. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, so, you know, back in the office, basically help helping the, you know, the office get through the day on days like that. But, um, and then, uh, yeah, just seeing where I'm kind of needed, you know, some, you know, I don't do that many quotes and estimates. We have a, a sales team now that helps out with that. Um, but everybody, you know, if I stand in the office, I'll, you know, I'll have, you know, 15 questions within an hour, you know, of, you know, advice or, or something, or you got to be pointed in the mm-hmm. right direction kind of deal. I, so I used to call that, uh, Hey Mike disease. Oh, right. Yeah. Cause, uh, every time I'd walk into the door be like, hey Mike, hey Mike, everybody had a question all of a sudden, right? right? Um, and I know that you've dealt with this, Derek. Uh, the got a minute? The, you can, do you got a minute? Right? Do you st- now, I know that you're highly systematized at this point. With, we've with we've gotten a lot better, but there's always, as you, as you, you try to it? grow, you still have to adapt. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then especially adding on the fire component, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole nother ball game so yeah i mean you feel like you, you, your role kind of shifts and I'm, you guys are both doing it as well it's almost more of their questions but as long as they're the right kind of questions you know you never mind mentoring like some people will come and ask me a question and i'll be like you know that answer and oh. I'll, I'll just answer it with another question and they'll come up with it mm-hmm. so i feel like answering some of the basic things that they come back to you with you're taking away an opportunity for them to learn Absolutely. It was tough to get used to yeah. because you're so used to solving problems and answering things, mm-hmm. but you're not helping their development. Hundred so. percent agree with that. I'll I'll say, what do you think we should do when they ask me? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it's that whole teach them the fish or fishing for them, right? Yeah, all you all you young guys out there too. You know, you come into a company and throw throw solutions out there. And, yeah, you know, you want to impress people and try to solve problems, even if it's not the right answer. At least come up with something. Right? Yeah. Nice thought exercise. Yeah, that'd be nice if they came up like, hey, I've got the situation this is what I'm thinking about doing. Yep. That'd be sweet if they approached it that way. Or here's what I did. Let me know what your thoughts are. That's that's probably the best way. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I struggle with it though, man, because I'm such sure. like my instinct is to solve the problem, fix the issue. Right. I want to answer and I know the answer. Yep. You right? wanna you wanna I've move doing, the fence. I've been doing this <laughs> right. I've been doing this for ten years, man. Like I know yeah. I know the answer. You know, yeah. so it's like I could do I just solve this problem real quick or do I Turn it into a learning moment. Right. Sometimes there's not time for that. You know, if it's gotten to the point where somebody's kicked the can down the road a little bit mm. too far, then you kind of jump in and do what you got to do. Or if I've had too much caffeine that day. Oh, that happens. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but it happens <laughs> to me. I get so cracked out on caffeine sometimes. I'm like, yeah. Rah, 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 too much blue collar coffee. Stewies. Where are you, Stewies? Actually, I, I need. <laughs> so I, well. This is nothing to do with this episode, but uh, so Joe just had a baby. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. Boy or girl? Boy. Three weeks old as of awesome. today. And I was asking him how he's sleeping, and obviously he's not. Terrible. Yeah. 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 And I was like, yeah, I was, uh, we were walking upstairs. I'm like, yeah, my son, he's four and a half. He finally just started sleeping in his own bed this week. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're at that. And what's really funny is I have not slept all week. Like, I was sleeping better when he was in the bed. Now I'm up, like, every 15 minutes just checking on him. Like, <laughs> so wrong last night I was I was downstairs in the living room. I was doing some work. It was about 11 o'clock, and I just heard a big thud. Ooh. Yeah. Isla fell out of bed. Oh. oh it was not good. Not I, good. No, just scared her straight. Couldn't go back to sleep. It was so. It's always something. It's always yeah. something. Well, always something. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Yeah, the coffee thing made me think of that because I need like extra coffee today. 
You must need it all the time. Do you drink coffee? I do in the mornings. Yeah. Yeah. I almost texted you too. I was I was a few minutes behind, so I didn't want to stop and, and walk in late with coffee, you know. But uh, I almost texted to see if you guys wanted. Some. Oh man, I should have. Should have. Next time, please. I got gotcha. you. Send that message. Uh, <laughs> what? Um, I know we're getting short on time. And I want to keep here all day, but um, what the hell was the question I was going to ask you? See, if I had that coffee, I'd have that thing out of my mouth already. <laughs> um. As far as like biggest challenges you've ever overcome as a business owner, what do you, what do you think? If anything jump jump into your brain, I mean, I I can think of that on a few different levels. Yeah. You know, um, some jobs. I mean, like I will, after the job's done, I'd be like, wow, that was an extremely difficult job. You know, and I learned a lot from it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, we've been doing uh, Hoffman's car wash plumbing yeah heating in there and it's you know after you do one of those it's like okay that's the real deal right yeah you're gonna go i'm gonna go out this a different way next time you know and and like you know that's as far as a a job point that's that's one battle right there you know um and then it's you know setting up a service department you know you can get into every little you know as far as one thing it's it's tough to think about but like you know uh creating an office that was very hard to overcome. Um, creating, you know, just training, you know, employees to be mm-hmm. what they are today, you know, was another huge thing to overcome. Um, trying to, you know, discipline the discipline the employees, you know, you know, and lay down ground rules for everybody, you know, that's another hard thing to overcome. So I feel like, you know, once we as we got bigger, you know, I would run into something I would have to overcome, mm-hmm. you know, like what I just said, and then. Um, eventually then I look back on it and it's like, oh yeah, that was, you know, that was hard, but today it's, you know, something different I'm trying to overcome. You know? Yeah. But when you're in it, how do you, how do you deal with it when you're in those situations? So, you know, I have like obsessed about it basically and figure it out eventually, you know, trial and error. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm like constantly thinking about work, you know, it's, I don't know if I'm scarred from you know, being on call for by myself for years and years, you know, where I'm constantly like, you know, thinking about work and, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to improve. Um, But it's, you know, it's, I don't know, one thing after another, I feel like, you know, as far as trying to figure something out, you know, um, as far as I think that's the the business normal. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. It means you want to be great. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah, I, I I'm never not thinking about work. <laughs> Actually, I think, c- come to mind, it's uh, the hardest thing was delegating. Yeah, yeah, it's like it was letting go after a certain point. Yeah, that was that was really tough because um, it's like okay, I'm not doing every service call. Mm-hmm. Okay, then I'm not doing every quote. You know, when I was just strictly doing quotes, then I'm not answering every single phone call that comes in, you know, it was like, yeah. okay, then somebody else has to do this, but they have to know what to do. And then I need to come up with a process, how to do it. Um, yeah, that, I, I would say delegation. And how did you overcome that? Letting go. Just, <laughs> just being like, it's going to be what it's going it, to be. Yeah. It's going to be what it's going to be. I'll, I'll, you know, Matata. I'll hold my hand the best, you know, I'll hold their hand the best, you know, I can. And, you know, and then kind of a little bit of trial and error at first, you know, but once you have like one person that's trained, then they can train other people, mm-hmm. you know, so. That's a tough one. Yeah. You got to just be like, all right, well, if it's going to break, it's going to break. Right. And then I'll deal with that situation. Yeah. So, um, so if you were going to tell a listener one thing about, you know, being a business owner in a blue collar field, what would it be? Um, I would say it's extremely tough. It's a long road. You know, yeah. if, if, if somebody's going into trying to be a business owner, you know, um, it is, you know, it's not an easy job, you know, and there's no, you're not never clocking out and you're never, you know, done with the job. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say if you're, you know, looking to go into this field, um, it is a great field to go into. Um, anybody that, you know, was thinking about it, like our field is, you know, expanding, there's always going to be a need. Um, and I would, you know, highly recommend that, you know, people, you know, if they have experience, you know, please apply. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> if if not, you know, if you know, Hudson, like Hudson Valley, like a, a school like that, like it's you know, it's it's a life changer. You know, it it all you know, it it could set you up for success. Um, it's you know, once you learn a trade like this, um, it's with you forever. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's always something to fall back on. It's something you can do around the house. Um, it could save you thousands and thousands of dollars. You know, it can be a, your salary every year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's definitely, um, you know, something good to get into as well. That's awesome. And where can these young guys find you? Um, and girls. Yeah. Young guys if, and girls. If they're looking to apply, you know, we're on Indeed. You know, if you want to go on Indeed and apply right there or on a website, you know, um, hit careers and right there as well it's awesome thanks for coming in man absolutely appreciate you taking the time uh, yeah. I know you're busy and tired yeah, it's impressive what, <laughs> yeah. impressive what yeah. you've accomplished so thank you appreciate yeah. it yeah, yeah taking the baton and going yeah. forward with it man yeah. do the best I can and that's all you do sometimes that's what you say at the end of the day I just did the best I can start over tomorrow <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. thanks again Joe thank you D-Rock thanks Until everybody for listening uh, we got any other announcements Always, a, sh- always have- a shout out to the our friends over at MLB Construction, yeah, and our friends over at uh, Michael's Group, yeah, Luke. Um, drop us some questions. Take a look at our social media pages that Mike sometimes posts on. Dude, I I totally have everything deleted off my phone. Where I'm in I'm in one of those things where I deleted all the social media apps. I have this cycle I go through. Here it is, right for the listeners. This is how it goes. <laughs> I need social media at some point for something, so I install the apps back on my phone. They're on my phone, typically maybe a week. And then I catch myself scrolling through reels for like 10 minutes. And then I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? (laughs) And then I get, and I delete the apps off my phone again. Yeah. And that's why, so that's why you'll see every once in a while, you'll see me, you'll see some fresh posts on like Instagram, right? Cause I'm on that week. Cause I'm like, all right. And you know, and then, uh, and then I catch myself scrolling and I delete them again because I hate it. I think it's silly to waste your life's watching that shit yeah could be educational you know so that and that's yeah. i mean listen we're not talking about like you know cat videos we're talking like jujitsu videos or <laughs> yeah. like you know like it's yeah. all the instructional stuff for sure right. but or farming stuff but still it's still like there's other avenues to get the information oh my god it's yeah. so yeah read a book or something yeah. i don't yeah. know it but, is so yeah check our social media that I won't be posting on because it's not on my phone right now. But check it out anyway, everybody. Go to the website, bluecollarstartup.io. Website for sure. Leave us a message, drop some questions, and, and we'll get back to you. Yeah, or leave some questions on the YouTube videos or yeah. Rumble videos. And we'll ask them on the show. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks for listening, everybody. Appreciate it.